Hi, I'm Reed Bloodworth, the managing partner of Bloodworth Law, with offices in Orlando and Winter Haven, Florida. Bloodworth Law handles a broad range of business litigation, including defamation. This is part two of our discussion on defamation. In the previous video, we discussed the general definition of defamation and the difference between verbal defamation or slander and written defamation or libel. Now I'm going to discuss the difference between per se defamation and per quad defamation. If a statement is actionable on its face, meaning something is said that is incredibly hurtful and blatantly false, that's called per se defamation. In a per se defamation action, the statement itself is actionable on its own. The damages will be presumed, and the malice element does not have to be proven unless the plaintiff is a public figure. Per se defamation statements are so bad that they would immediately subject a person or a company to hatred, distrust, ridicule, disgrace, and contempt. For example, let's say a potential client was considering using business A or business B. Business B says to the potential client, in an effort to convince them to use company A or business A, don't use business A. Those guys have been charged with bribery and blackmail. This is per se defamation. In the context of this type of lawsuit, it's per se defamation because it's such an egregious statement that a court will presume that they harm the plaintiff's reputation. Statements that qualify for defamation per se have traditionally fit into the following four categories. Accusing someone of a serious criminal offense, accusing someone of having an infectious disease, accusing someone of conduct that's incompatible with the person's business, trade, position, or office, and finally, accusing a woman of a lack of chastity. Defamation per quad is much more difficult to prove than per se cases, because in per quad cases, the statements are typically more backhanded than a straightforward per se statement. Often the accusation is implied based upon the circumstances in which it's given. Remember the earlier example of business A and business B? Rather than a straightforward statement that business A is run by criminals, a per quad statement might go along lines of, you don't want to do business with business A. I hear they take pictures of kids. The owner of business A might be a family photographer on the side, but when put in this context by business B, it was clearly made with malice and meant to harm business A. So let's review. Under the umbrella of defamation, there's slander and there's libel, which require the same elements. Libel's in writing, slander is verbal. And finally, there are different levels of defamation, per se, versus per quad. I hope this was helpful. Again, I'm Reed Bloodworth, and if you are dealing with a legal dispute, give me a call. Let's talk about how Bloodworth Law can help you, your family, or your business.